Hi guys, I'm really excited. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about what is arguably the best camera that's ever been invented. The smartphone. I'm gonna give you five ways to create awesome landscape photographs from just using your phone and maybe a few other things. It's really, really easy, and it's something that you have on you all the time. So stay tuned, and you'll be able to shoot photos just like these. <laughs> there were some great images, and they were all taken on the iPhone 6S. The key thing is that if you're going to be taking photos with your phone or with your full-frame camera, the same things apply to create amazing photographs. You've got to think about light, you've got to think about composition, you've got to think about subject, and you've got to think about timing. If you think about it, if you get all four of those things correct, then you can create amazing photographs, and it doesn't really matter what camera you have on you. Yeah, sure, I shoot most of my photos with my D810, but if I haven't got it, then the best photo I'm going to get is on my iPhone. So I need to understand how to use this iPhone to create amazing photographs. I have done quite a lot of things over the last few years, working with lots of different phones to work out what works best and what doesn't work so best. And it's really important to understand the limitations of your phone, to be able to understand how you can use some of the great things on it and things to avoid as well. Let's get started. There are five things that you need to do. And the first of those is make sure you shoot in awesome light. If you look at landscape photographs, most of them are shot in amazing light. The best way to get amazing light is to either get up early and get sunrise or go out and get sunset. Now that doesn't necessarily mean you're shooting straight into the sun and getting the sun as it sets over the horizon um, or the sun as it rises over the horizon. But I, Taking photographs at that time of day, the sun is really low and it casts amazing light over the landscape. So if you look at these two images, one of them's taken at 11 o'clock and the other one's taken in the golden hour. So that golden hour spreads across sunrise or sunset and it's when the light is at its best. That not, might not necessarily mean after sunrise or before sunset. Sometimes after sunset or before sunrise is really good as well. But what you can see with these two images is one's really dynamic, has got real interest to it, and the other's fairly flat and boring. So it's really important to make the most of that amazing light that you have. Now, it's not necessarily true that that amazing light happens at sunrise and sunset. Sometimes, in certainly in foggy conditions and misty conditions, you can get amazing light and light beams in the middle of the day just like this photo that I took on my iPhone when I was in Yosemite. Um, I was actually driving down the road and I, I managed just to jump out of the car. I had my iPhone on me and took this photo. And it just shows what you can get with the, the iPhone. The key to this amazing light though, is making sure you make the best use of it. Um, and to do that, there's some apps on the iPhone that I recommend most people use. Um, which brings me to number two of the five things that you need to do to create amazing landscapes. And that is making the most of the apps on your iPhone. So let's go and have a look at some of the apps that I use and see how I use those apps on my iPhone. And maybe we can get a better idea of what works and what doesn't and what might work for you guys. So I have a folder set up um, with all my awesome photo apps in and we'll take a look at some more of these apps later. But first of all, let's go into one of the two camera apps I've got here. So I don't use a default camera on the iPhone. Maybe I use it to take some snaps. But if I'm taking landscape photos, I'll go into one of these two photo apps. Camera Plus and ProCam are the ones I've tried. There's loads and loads of them on the App Store. Um, I really like ProCam. So if I just go into that now, um, what you can see here is um, I am photographing a landscape late in the evening and there's some really good light and some good clouds. And what, what you can see is, first of all, I've got it set on RAW. So within the camera app, you can record RAW photos, which gives you um, better dynamic range um, and more ability to edit things like the white balance um, and get more out of the shadows and more out of the highlights later on. Now the key thing, talking about the highlights, is that you do not want to overexpose the highlights. So you can see here that um, the clouds are looking really bright when the exposure it looks good for the foreground, but you don't want that. What you want to do is you want to make sure that those clouds 
um, the exposure that you set for those clouds is such that they are not overexposed because if they are overexposed, you're never going to be able to pull that detail back later when you edit it in one of the other apps. A quick look at the other apps that I have in my photo apps folder. First of all, I have an investigator, which is a good app. There's loads of these that just tells me um, quite quickly what, what um, settings I took the photo on um, and I can see um, here what the shutter speed was, the aperture, the ISO. I also have um, Snapseed, which I'll come to later for editing the photos. I also have a camera remote for connecting to my Fuji X-T2. One of the best apps that I have for planning a photo shoot is TPE. Uh, this is great. It allows me to check where the sun rises and sets. I can look at the, where it is at a certain time of the day. So if I, if I go to say seven o'clock, which is now before sunset, I can see where that is. You can also check what the moon is doing, where the moon is, whether it's a full moon. So it makes it really easy to better plan your shoots, which makes for better photos. If you can plan before you go, that's gonna make a better photo. Also for planning, I use Magic Seaweed, which tells me the tides, but also what the waves are going to be like at a particular beach, if I'm gonna go down to the beach. It's really important to understand the tide. You really want to be shooting at low tide most of the time. And I also obviously have my Instagram account in here. So these are the apps that I use most of the time. They're in one location and I can have quick access to them, which makes for taking better photos because the biggest benefit of the iPhone is it's always with you and you want quick access to be able to take those photos. So number three on the five things that you need to do is make sure you nail the composition. Now the thing is with an iPhone or a smartphone is that they are limited resolution. They've got really tiny sensors compared to a full frame sensor and that means that they can't have high resolution otherwise the pixels are tiny and they will be very noisy. So the key thing is that you've got to make the best use of that resolution. So you don't want to be zooming in onto your photos. As soon as you do that, you're re reducing the resolution from 12 megapixels down to maybe four or five megapixels. And that means that you're not going to be able to print it very big. You're not going to be able to put it on any photo sharing sites or, you, or you're not going to be able to do much with it really. So you really need to make the most of that 12 megapixel resolution, which means that there's a limitation to, to the, a phone. You can't really zoom in. If you want to pick out a detail in the landscape, you really do need to be going to your full frame um, camera or your bigger camera with a zoom lens. Um, and understanding that limitation helps you take better shots. So when you're doing the composition, and, and if you look at a composition that I did last night, um, I went up um, onto the reserve and um, took some photos with, with the iPhone. I actually took a photo with the iPhone and the um, SLR to compare, which I'll show you later when I print these out. What you need to make sure is that when you go and do that composition, you, you're making sure that you're not gonna crop it too much afterwards. Now, okay, you might go from a, a landscape um, crop to a, a square crop for Instagram or, or whatever, but you don't want to be cropping right in afterwards. So you want to make sure that you make, get the best composition right at the beginning. If you have to walk, 50 or 100 feet to get that composition, then do it. Or if you have to just move a little bit to the side to get that composition, then do it. Um, but creating that best composition when you take the photo will enable you to make the best use of that 12 megapixels that you have in your iPhone. And that 12 megapixels will allow you to print about a 10 inch by eight inch print. And again, we're gonna to come to printing later on. So ensure you do that and you'll get amazing photos. So the next one, number four, to create amazing landscape photos is don't always handhold your iPhone. Sometimes you need to just prop it up, maybe on a rock or on a, um, a chair or just on the floor to get some, actually having that low angle is probably gonna create some better um, photos as well. Okay, so why do we have to not always handhold the, the, the iPhone? Well, the iPhone's really clever. So um, what it does is if the light is getting lower, then it increases the ISO, which is the sensitivity of the sensor in the phone. So what that does is allow you to have a faster shutter speed, which means that you can handhold it, which is great because you don't get blurred images, but it's not so good in low light because it means that the ISO goes right up, you have these really tiny pixels on the sensor, and that means they get very noisy as, as they become more sensitive. So what you've got to do is make sure that ISO stays as low as you can. And actually on the iPhone 6S, you can get that down to ISO 23 by using um, an app. Now we talked about those apps in point two earlier, 
So what you need to do is go into the app. In this case, I'm going to go into ProCam, and then you need to go to the ISO and make sure that's set at ISO 23, or as low as your smartphone camera will go. Now, in uh, and the Android cameras, which I'm not as familiar with, I think you can do that in the native app. Now, in low light, you're probably going to go down to a shutter speed of maybe a tenth of a second. It's going to be quite difficult to handhold the iPhone and get it very sharp at a tenth or a less than a tenth of a second. So you're going to want to prop it up or put it on something. Now, what I use is the, you can see on the back of my iPhone here, I've got a quad lock case and I have a quad lock um, adapter for that. I click that in like this um, and then I have, um, Usually I have just a Gorilla Pod that I, that I use um, and I can put it on the top of the Gorilla Pod and that's a really easy way to be able to take photos with my iPhone and not worry about any camera shake in low light. The other thing, the other added benefit by doing that and putting your iPhone on a tripod and obviously you're only going to use something small like the Gorilla Pod. Um, is that it allows you to compose the image and take more time over composing that image. Um, and one of the things that I found using when I use my big camera is, um, my big camera, <laughs> my, my, um, my full frame Nikon D, D810 is, is that by putting it on a tripod and that methodology that I go through, I really think about that composition a lot more and that's what enables me to get much better photographs. Okay, the final thing, the fifth thing, and probably, no, it's not the most important thing, light's the most important thing. Maybe the second most important thing is to care about your images once you've shot them. So the images that come straight out of the iPhone might not be the ones that you eventually share on Instagram. You're gonna be able, to, you're gonna to want to do some editing with them. Um, now you can edit them on the iPhone. There's a great app on the iPhone. Let me take this quad lock off. There's a great um, app on the iPhone that I use all the time called Snapseed. It was originally by Nick Software, which Google bought, I think. Um, so Google owns it now. You can get it on the App Store. It's free and it's just the most amazing bit of software for editing your photographs. Um, I also just download my photos into Lightroom and edit them in Lightroom. It's a really good way of um, seeing them on a bigger screen and be able to do more with them. Um, and we can have a look at the photos that I took last night um, on, on, on my iPhone and compare them with as well with, with the bigger camera and, um, and then maybe print them out and see what they look like. So let's go over to the computer and, and, and have a look at them in a bit more detail. So I've been out with my two cameras, the iPhone 6S, that awesome camera, and the Nikon 810. I set them up both on tripods and I took as close as I could the same scene on both cameras and I've now imported them into Lightroom. So this one, believe it or not, is the iPhone 6S photo taken carefully, um, thinking about the composition so I don't have to crop it, I'm not going to crop it at all. And then up here where, where the, the lightest part of the image is, I've made sure I've not overexposed it. So you can see that there's no overexposed areas. Then I took the same image, which is this one, on my Nikon D810. So what I'm going to do is go to the iPhone image and I'm going to go and edit this in Lightroom. So if I go into the develop module here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly increase the exposure. Um, I'm going to increase the shadows quite significantly. I'm also going to, just going to add a little bit of clarity, not too much. I might do some local clarity in a minute. I'm going to slightly adjust this tone curve here just to bring out some of the... And then I'm just going to do two graduated filters. So I'm going to pull one down here. Um, and I'm just doing this roughly for now. And that's going to just impact this area at the top. I'm going to slightly reduce the exposure of this top area. I'm going to slightly increase the contrast. Um, then I'm going to do another there. And I'm going to increase the exposure. So then finally, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring out the oranges a little bit. So I'm going to click on this um, color slider here. I'm going to slightly increase the saturation of the oranges. Not too much. You can overdo it really easily. Because I want to bring out the oranges here and the oranges in the sky. So if you do it too much, it just looks awful. So I'm just going to bring it up to about there. So then I did the same on the Nikon um, image as well. And I came up with this. So this is the Nikon image. And this is the edited 
iPhone image. And as you can see, the Nikon's got a slightly better color rendition, but really there's not a huge difference between those two images. The iPhone's performed amazingly well. And you can do the same sort of edits from your phone. As I spoke about earlier, there's a great app called Snapseed, which allows you to edit the photos. So if I just open this, here's a photo that I took a few months ago now, actually, and I exposed for the highlights, and there's, there's still some detail, as you can see, in the shadows as well. What I can do is use the app to improve this. So obviously you can see here, you've got lots of options to do things. If I go to Tune Image, then I can go and I can um, change whatever I want. So I might want to just slightly reduce the highlights here. I'm going to increase the shadow detail a little bit. Um, and I'm going to also increase the ambience a little bit, which increases local contrast on the image. So that's already looking a lot better. But the other thing you can do on here, and you have to be really careful with this, is do something with filters. Now, if I just apply this filter here, then that is way over the top. You definitely don't want to do that. And what this does is it does a whole range of different edits to, to the photo. But the clever thing is that you can change the filter strength. So I can reduce that filter strength right down. It does bring out some of the detail in the sky. You have to be careful because it increases noise as well. And I want, don't want to reduce the saturation. I actually want to bring that saturation back to, to zero. And if I now look at the before and the after, you can see that that's really significantly improved the image. It's improved the contrast in the sky and some of the detail in the foreground. Yeah, so I think that's worth printing out. So that's it. Five simple techniques to create awesome landscapes with your phone like this. Yeah, pretty pleased with that. So thanks for watching. All the things I've used in the video, the apps, the tripod, the quad lock are all linked in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it, comment below and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Oh, and I know, notification. If you want to get notifications, click the bell button and you'll get notified when I upload new content, which I'm going to be doing much more regularly now. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate all the subscribers over the last few weeks and I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>